Imagine navigating a world that seems louder, faster and more confusing than it does for others, where simple tasks feel like insurmountable challenges. This is the reality for many teenagers with ADHD and high-functioning autism. You know, folks, we often talk about the importance of understanding each other, and that's especially true when it comes to neurodiversity. Today's video is dedicated to my 14-year-old grandson, who struggles daily to make sense of a world that seems out of sync with his mind. He, like many others, faces the dual challenge of ADHD and high-functioning autism. It breaks my heart to see him struggle, to see the world throw obstacles in his way that others don't even notice. My grandson is a bright and curious teenager, but every day he battles with focusing on his schoolwork, organising his thoughts and managing social interactions. Tasks that seem simple to most of us, like keeping track of time or following a conversation, can be overwhelming for him. And you know what? That's okay. We're going to figure this out together. This video is not just for my grandson, but for all teenagers, parents, siblings and friends who want to understand and better manage ADHD and high-functioning autism from a holistic perspective. Let's take radical responsibility and explore practical steps to make life more manageable and fulfilling. We're going to roll up our sleeves, dive deep and get real about these conditions. Now, ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is often misunderstood. People throw around terms like distracted or hyper, without truly grasping the neurological underpinnings of this condition. It's not just about fidgeting in a chair, it's about a brain that's wired differently. One of the hallmark symptoms of ADHD is inattentiveness. This isn't simply daydreaming or not paying attention. It's a persistent pattern of difficulty focusing, even on tasks that interest them. Imagine trying to read a book when your mind feels like a room full of chattering monkeys. That's the reality for many with ADHD. They're trying to focus, they really are, but their brains have other ideas. Then there's hyperactivity. Now, this doesn't always mean running around like a tornado. It can manifest as a constant feeling of restlessness and inability to sit still, even when it's expected. It's like their internal engine is stuck on overdrive and they can't find the brakes. And let's not forget impulsivity. This is the tendency to act without thinking, to blurt out answers, interrupt conversations, or make decisions on a whim without considering the consequences. It's like their brain is a race car without a steering wheel, constantly speeding ahead without a clear direction. Now let's talk about high functioning autism. This is a form of autism where individuals may have average or above average intelligence but struggle with social interactions, communication and sensory processing. They see the world differently and that's not a bad thing, but it can make navigating everyday life pretty darn challenging. One of the biggest challenges is difficulty in social interactions. Imagine walking into a room and feeling like you're watching a play in a foreign language. You can see what's happening but you don't understand the cues, the unspoken rules, the social dance. That's what it can feel like for individuals with high-functioning autism. Social cues that come naturally to others can be like deciphering a secret code. Then there's the need for routine and the discomfort with change. Imagine your world as a carefully constructed house of cards and any slight deviation from the plan feels like a threat to its stability. That's the level of anxiety that change can evoke in individuals with high functioning autism. They find comfort and security in predictability. 
and disruptions to that routine can be highly distressing. And let's not forget the repetitive behaviours and fixated interests. This can manifest as a fascination with a specific topic, object or activity, to the point where it consumes their attention. While these interests can be a source of joy and motivation, they can also sometimes become all-encompassing, making it difficult to shift focus or engage in other activities. Now let's talk Turkey about managing these conditions. You've got to understand, it ain't just about popping pills or talking to a therapist, although those can be important pieces of the puzzle. We're talking about a full body, mind and spirit overhaul. Think of it like this. Your body's a finely tuned car, an ADHD or autism. They're like having a little something misfiring under the hood. You can't just slap on a new coat of paint and call it a day. You've got to get under the hood, tinker with the engine and make sure all the parts are working in harmony. That's where holistic management comes in. We're talking about looking at the whole picture, your sleep, your diet, how you handle stress, how you move your body and even your spiritual connection. It's about finding what works for you, what makes you feel your best and building a life that supports your unique needs. And let me tell you something, this ain't about being perfect. Life's messy and we're all going to have our good days and our bad days. But by taking a holistic approach, you're giving yourself the best possible chance to thrive, not just survive. All right, let's talk about sleep, folks. And I am not talking about those three-hour energy drink-fueled all-nighters. I'm talking about good quality, shut your phone off and get eight hours sleep. See, when you're living with ADHD or autism, your brain's working overtime, processing information and sensory input like a runaway train. Sleep? That's its chance to finally hit the brakes, recharge and clean up the tracks. Skimping on sleep? You're basically running that train off the rails. You're going to see more difficulty focusing, more impulsivity, more emotional ups and downs, and frankly, more of everything you don't want. So make sleep a non-negotiable. Aim for eight to 10 hours a night. Create a relaxing bedtime routine. Make your bedroom a sleep sanctuary. Your brain will thank you for it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Exercise? You want me to go for a jog when I can barely get off the couch? And listen, I get it. But here's the thing. Moving your body is like hitting the reset button on your brain. And I ain't not talking about becoming a marathon runner overnight. We're talking about finding something you enjoy. Something that gets your heart rate up and your blood pumping. Maybe it's a walk in the park, a dance class, a swim in the pool, or even just chasing your dog around the backyard. Exercise helps to regulate those brain chemicals, those neurotransmitters that can be a little wonky with ADHD and autism. It can improve focus, reduce anxiety, and even give you a boost of those feel-good endorphins. So, Get out there and move your body. You don't have to love it, but your brain will sure thank you for it. You know, folks, I can't tell you how many times I've had guests with their lives in utter chaos. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, they haven't showered in days. It's like they've given up on themselves, and that's a slippery slope. Now, I'm not saying that good hygiene is going to solve all your problems with ADHD or autism. But it sure isn't going to hurt. When you feel clean, you feel better about yourself. It's basic self-respect. Think about it this way. You wouldn't go out in public with dirty clothes and expect people to take you seriously, would you? It's the same with your body. 
taking care of your hygiene is a way of showing yourself and the world that you matter. So make it a non-negotiable part of your routine. Shower daily. Brush your teeth twice a day. Wash your hands. You know the drill. It's not rocket science, but it's a simple act of self-care that can make a world of difference. Look, I get it. You're busy, you've got a lot going on, and you feel like you can't afford to take a break. But let me tell you something, you can't afford not to. It's like running a marathon without stopping. You're going to burn out before you reach the finish line. Taking regular breaks, even if it's just for a few minutes, can help you stay focused, reduce stress, and prevent burnout. Think of it like hitting the reset button on your brain. It gives you a chance to clear your head, recharge your batteries, and come back to whatever you're doing with a fresh perspective. Now I'm not talking about scrolling through social media or watching TV. I'm talking about real breaks. Get up, move around, step outside for some fresh air, do some deep breathing or listen to some calming music. The key is to find what works for you and make it a regular part of your day. Trust me, your mind and body will thank you for it. You ever notice how when you're stressed or anxious, your breathing becomes shallow and rapid? That's your body's natural response to stress. But here's the thing, you can actually use your breath to calm your nervous system down and regain control. Deep breathing is a powerful tool that can help you manage stress, reduce anxiety, and improve your overall well-being. And the best part is, it's free, and you can do it anywhere, anytime. Here's how you do it. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes and take a slow, deep breath in through your nose, filling your lungs completely. Hold your breath for a few seconds and then slowly exhale through your mouth. Repeat this several times, focusing on your breath and letting go of any tension in your body. It's like hitting the pause button on your stress response and giving your body and mind a chance to reset. We're talking about taking care of your mental well-being, folks, and that includes your physical health. You must stretch. It's not just for athletes or dancers. Stretching is like giving your body a big old thank you after a long day. Now, you don't need to bend yourself like a pretzel. Just a few minutes each day can make a world of difference. Think about how good it feels to stretch in the morning. You're basically telling your muscles to wake up and get ready for the day. And it's not just about feeling good. Stretching can help improve your flexibility, range of motion, and even reduce your risk of injury. So whether you're sitting at a desk all day or running around like a chicken with its head cut off, make time for stretching. Your body will thank you for it. And when your body's happy, your mind's happy. This is about taking a holistic approach to your well-being. Listen up, we're talking about living with ADHD and autism, and that means finding ways to stay focused and manage energy levels. One thing that can really help is taking movement breaks throughout the day. Now I'm not talking about running a marathon here, just get up and move your body every hour or so. It could be as simple as walking around your office, doing some jumping jacks, or even just stretching. The point is to get your blood flowing and your brain re-energized. Think of it like this. When you sit for long periods, your body can start to feel stiff and sluggish. Your mind can get foggy and it becomes harder to concentrate. But when you take a movement break, 
you're giving your body and brain a much needed refresh. It's like hitting the reset button so you can come back feeling more alert and focused. Let me tell you something. There's a whole world out there beyond your four walls. And spending time in nature can do wonders for your mental and physical well-being, especially if you're dealing with ADHD or autism. Now, I understand that getting outside isn't always easy. Life gets busy, and sometimes you just want to curl up on the couch. But trust me on this one. Make an effort to get some fresh air and sunshine every day. Think about how good it feels to breathe in fresh air and feel the sun on your skin. Nature has a way of calming your nerves and clearing your head. It's like hitting the reset button on your mind and body. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Go for a walk in the park, have your morning coffee on the porch, or even just sit outside and listen to the birds sing. Every little bit helps. We're going to talk about posture now, and this isn't just about looking good, this is about feeling good. You see, when you're slouching over like a wilted flower, your body's out of whack. You're compressing your organs, you're straining your back, and you're telling the world you've something to hide. I'm not saying you have to walk around like a soldier at attention all day long, but finding that neutral spine, that's where it's at. Imagine a string pulling you up from the crown of your head, shoulders relaxed, chest open. You'll breathe easier, you'll look more confident, and you'll project an image of strength and capability. And good posture isn't just about appearances, it's about respecting yourself. And when you carry yourself with pride, you feel better on the inside too. It's about telling yourself, I'm worth it. I deserve to take up space. I'm going to own this day. So stand tall, folks, and let the world see what you're made of. You're not a shrinking violet. You're a force to be reckoned with. Now go out there and show them what you got. All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite pick-me-up caffeine. Now I get it, a cup of coffee in the morning can be like a jump start to the system. But let's be real, too much of a good thing can turn bad really quickly. You see, caffeine is a stimulant. And for folks with ADHD and autism, it can be like throwing gasoline on a fire. Now I'm not saying you have to give up your caffeine entirely. But let's talk about moderation, folks. Too much caffeine can make you jittery, anxious, and keep you up all night. And when you're already wired differently, that's the last thing you need. Instead of reaching for that fourth cup, how about trying some alternatives? Herbal teas, water with lemon, even just taking a few minutes to step outside and get some fresh air can do wonders. And listen, if you're having trouble cutting back on the caffeine, don't beat yourself up about it. Talk to your doctor. They can help you figure out what's right for you. Remember, it's all about finding that balance. Listen to your body, make healthy choices, and you'll be well on your way to a happier, healthier you. Let's talk about food. Not just any food, I'm talking about real, whole, nutritious food that's going to fuel your body and your mind. You see, what you put in your body matters. It affects everything from your energy levels to your mood, to your ability to focus. And when you have ADHD or autism, eating right is even more crucial. Now, you don't have to become a health nut overnight and swear off all things delicious. But let's be real, filling your body with processed junk and sugary drinks is like trying to run a marathon on empty calories. You might get a quick burst of energy, but it's grinning to crash and burn rapidly. Instead, focus on eating whole, unprocessed foods like fruits, vegetables, lean proteins and whole grains. These foods provide the nutrients your brain and body need to function at their best. 
And it's not about being perfect. It's about progress, not perfection. Start by making small changes, like adding a salad to your dinner or swapping out that soda for a glass of water. Your body will thank you for it and you'll be amazed at how much better you feel. You know, we talk a lot about putting the right things in your body, the good stuff that fuels your brain and keeps you going. But just as important as what you put in is what you flush out. And that's where water comes in. You've got to stay hydrated. You see, dehydration, it's like running a car on fumes. You might get by for a little bit, but eventually you're headed for a breakdown. Brain fog, fatigue, headaches, these are all signs you're not getting enough H2O. And let me tell you, those symptoms do no favours for someone already navigating the challenges of ADHD and autism. Now, I'm not saying guzzle down gallons a day. Listen to your body, pay attention to those thirst cues. But make a conscious effort to sip water consistently throughout the day. Keep a reusable bottle with you. Make it a habit. Remember, you're trying to create an environment where your brain and body can thrive. And staying hydrated, well, that's just good. Common sense self-care. It's giving yourself the best chance to succeed. Let's talk about junk food. We all know what it is. Sugary drinks, processed snacks, greasy fast food. It's the stuff that tastes good in the moment, but leaves you feeling sluggish and foggy afterwards. And for folks with ADHD and autism, those crashes can be even more intense. Junk food is everywhere. It's convenient and it's designed to be addictive. But here's the thing, you're in control. You have the power to choose what you put in your body. And choosing nutritious whole foods over junk is like choosing clarity over chaos. Now you can still enjoy the occasional treat. This isn't about deprivation. It's about making conscious, healthy choices most of the time. Start by cleaning out your pantry. Get rid of the temptation. Stock up on fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. Real food that fuels your body and your mind. Remember, you deserve to feel your best. And that starts with taking care of yourself from the inside out. Give your body the nutrients it needs to thrive and watch how much better you feel. Now let's talk about a nutritional powerhouse that can make a real difference for folks with ADHD and autism omega-3 fatty acids. You find these healthy fats in foods like fatty fish, walnuts and flax seeds. And let me tell you they're essential for brain health. You see, omega-3s, they're like the building blocks for a strong and healthy brain. They help with focus, attention and mood regulation. All areas that can be challenging for those with ADHD and autism. It's like giving your brain the premium fuel it needs to function at its best. Now, omega-3s are not a magic cure, but incorporating them into your diet can make a world of difference. Aim to eat fatty fish like salmon, sardines, tuna or mackerel at least twice a week. Snack on walnuts or sprinkle flax seeds on your yogurt or oatmeal. Remember you've got to be proactive about your health. You've got to give your body the tools it needs to thrive. And omega-3s, well, they're a powerful tool to have in your arsenal. We're talking about taking control of your ADHD and autism. And that means taking control of your body. It's like a high performance machine. You have to fuel it correctly. And protein is premium fuel. Think of protein as the building blocks for your brain. It helps with focus, attention, and those executive functions that can be a real struggle. Without enough protein, you're running on fumes. Now you don't need to be a bodybuilder, 
but you have to get enough protein in every meal. Eggs in the morning, chicken or fish for lunch, maybe some beans or tofu for dinner. Make it a habit. You have to be proactive. You have to be in control and you must give your body the tools it needs to succeed. Protein is a powerful tool. Now this is crucial for managing ADHD and autism. Regular meal times. It's not just about what you eat, but when you eat. You need a schedule, a routine. Think of it like this. Your body thrives on predictability. When you eat erratically, your blood sugar spikes and crashes, and that can wreak havoc on your focus, your mood, your whole day. I know life gets busy, but you must make time for regular meals. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, and maybe a couple of healthy snacks in between. No more skipping meals, no more grabbing junk food on the go. You're trying to get a handle on your ADHD and autism, right? Well, this is how you do it. One step at a time, one meal at a time. You're building consistency, and that's what it's all about. Let's talk about giving your body the best chance to thrive. And sometimes that means filling in the gaps with a good quality multivitamin. I know you're trying to eat right, but even with the best intentions, it's tough to get all the nutrients you need from food alone. A multivitamin is like an insurance policy, making sure you're covered. We're talking about essential vitamins and minerals that support brain function, boost energy levels, and help regulate mood. Things like B vitamins, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc. These are your allies in the fight for better health. Now I'm not saying a multivitamin is a magic cure-all, but it's a simple proactive step you can take to support your overall well-being. And when you're dealing with ADHD and autism, every little bit helps. Now we're talking about cleaning up your diet and ditching those artificial additives. You know those unpronounceable chemicals lurking in processed foods? They're doing you no favours. They're messing with your body's natural balance and could even be making your ADHD or autism symptoms worse. I'm not saying you have to become a health nut overnight. Start by reading labels. If you can't pronounce it, chances are your body doesn't recognize it either. Choose whole unprocessed foods whenever possible. Stick with fruits, vegetables, lean meats, you know, real food. The goal here is to fuel your body with what it needs to function at its best. Those artificial colors, flavors and preservatives, they're just adding unnecessary junk to your system. Remember, making healthier choices isn't about deprivation, it's about empowerment. You're taking control of your health, one smart choice at a time. Let's now talk about fibre. It's not the most glamorous topic, but it's crucial for your overall health, and especially important when managing ADHD and autism. Fibre keeps things moving smoothly in your digestive system, which directly impacts your mood and energy levels. You see, when your gut is happy, your brain is happy. Fibre helps regulate blood sugar levels, preventing those energy crashes that can make focus and concentration even harder. Plus, it keeps you feeling full and satisfied, which can be a game changer when it comes to managing cravings and making healthier food choices. So how do you get more fibre in your diet? It's simpler than you think. Load up on fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes. Think berries, broccoli, lentils, quinoa. Real whole foods that nourish your body from the inside out. Remember, making gradual changes to your diet can have a big impact over time. Start by adding a serving or two of fibre-rich foods to your meals and see the difference it makes.
Now let's talk about mindful eating. This isn't some new age fad. It's about paying attention to your body and your food. In today's fast paced world, we're constantly rushing, eating on the go and multitasking during meals. But when you eat mindlessly, you're not really tasting your food or noticing your body's hunger and fullness cues. Mindful eating is about being present in the moment with your food. Slow down, take smaller bites, chew thoroughly and savour the flavours. Put your phone away, turn off the TV and create a calm environment for your meals. When you practice mindful eating, you become more aware of your body's signals telling you when you're actually hungry and when you're full. This can be a game changer for managing weight, cravings, and even your mood. Listen, life's too short to eat on autopilot. Start paying attention to your food and how it makes you feel. You'll be surprised at the difference it can make. We're about to tackle a cornerstone of managing ADHD and autism, creating a daily routine. This isn't about turning your life into a rigid, joyless schedule. It's about building a framework that brings predictability and reduces anxiety. Think of it like building a house. You need a solid foundation to build upon, right? That's what a routine does for your day. When you have ADHD or autism, your brain might struggle with executive function, making it tough to plan, organize and stay on track. A routine acts like an external brain, guiding you through your day and freeing up mental space for the important stuff. Imagine waking up every day knowing exactly what to expect and what's expected of you. Less mental clutter, less stress, more room to breathe. We are not talking about a minute-by-minute -minute military operation. We're aiming for a flexible but consistent structure. Start by identifying your non-negotiables. Waking up, meal times, work or school hours, bedtime. Build from there, incorporating things like exercise, relaxation and social time. Remember, consistency is key. The more you stick to your routine, the more automatic it becomes. It's like building a muscle. At first it takes effort and focus, but over time it becomes second nature. So, start small, be patient, and don't be afraid to adjust as needed. The goal is to find a rhythm that works for you. A rhythm that brings calm amidst the chaos. A rhythm that helps you thrive. Let's talk about setting clear goals. You can't hit a target you can't see, right? It's the same with life. Whether you're navigating ADHD, autism, or just the everyday hustle, having clear goals provides direction and motivation. It's about deciding what you want to achieve and then mapping out a plan to get there. I'm not talking about vague aspirations like be happier or be successful. Those are just wishes, not goals. We're talking about specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound objectives. Think of it like using a GPS. You need a clear starting point and destination to calculate the best route. Start by identifying what's important to you. What do you want to achieve in different areas of your life? Health, relationships, career, personal growth. Once you have a clear picture, break down those big goals into smaller, more manageable steps. This makes them less daunting and allows you to celebrate small victories along the way, which keeps you motivated. Remember, setting goals isn't a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. Life throws curveballs, priorities change, and that's okay. Regularly review and adjust your goals as needed. The key is to stay focused on the big picture while being flexible enough to navigate the detours along the way.
We're talking tools for success, and today's must-have is a planner. I don't care if it's digital, paper, a wall calendar, or a bunch of sticky notes. Find what works for you and make it your organisational best friend. You see, when you're dealing with ADHD or autism, your brain might not be wired for remembering every appointment, deadline or birthday. That's where a planner comes in. Think of it as an external hard drive for your brain, a place to store all those important dates, tasks and reminders. No more relying on a memory that might be playing tricks on you. No more missed appointments, forgotten assignments or last minute scrambles. A planner brings order to the chaos, freeing up mental space for more important things. Now, using a planner effectively is about more than just jotting down appointments. It's about creating a visual representation of your time, your commitments and your goals. Use it to schedule tasks, track progress and break down larger projects into smaller manageable chunks. Remember, consistency is key. Make it a habit to review your planner daily, update it regularly and refer to it often. It might feel like an extra step at first, but trust me, the peace of mind and increased productivity are worth it. A planner isn't about restriction, it's about freedom. Freedom from overwhelm, freedom from forgetfulness, freedom to focus on what truly matters. We're now going to talk about something that's absolutely critical for navigating life with ADHD and autism, positive self-talk. You know, the way you talk to yourself inside your head has a huge impact on how you feel and how you handle challenges. And let me tell you, negative self-talk is like poison. If you're constantly putting yourself down, telling yourself you're not good enough or you're grinning to fail, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like having a little devil on your shoulder, whispering doubts and fears in your ear all day long. But here's the good news. You can change that voice. You can choose to be your own cheerleader, your own best friend. Start by becoming aware of your negative thoughts. When you catch yourself thinking something negative, stop and challenge it. Ask yourself, is this really true? Or what's the evidence for this thought? More often than not, you'll find that those negative thoughts are based on fear and insecurity, not on facts. So replace those negative thoughts with positive affirmations. Tell yourself things like, I am capable, I am strong, I can do this. It may feel strange at first, but the more you practice positive self-talk, the more natural it will become. Now let's talk about a tool that can be incredibly helpful for individuals with ADHD and autism visual schedules. You see, folks with these conditions often thrive on structure and predictability. Visual schedules provide that structure in a clear, easy to understand way. Think of it like this, a visual schedule is a roadmap for your day or your week. It breaks down tasks and activities into smaller, more manageable steps using pictures or symbols. This can be especially helpful for teenagers or those who have difficulty with verbal communication. Instead of just telling a child, get ready for school, you can show them a series of pictures, one of them getting dressed, one of them eating breakfast, one of them brushing their teeth, and so on. This visual representation helps them understand the sequence of events and reduces anxiety about what comes next. And the beauty of visual schedules is that they can be adapted to any age or situation. You can use them at home, at school, or even in the workplace. So if you're struggling with organization or transitions, give visual schedules a try. They can be a real game changer.
All right, let's talk about mindfulness. Now, this isn't some new age mumbo jumbo. Mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment without judgment. It's about being fully aware of your thoughts, feelings and sensations without getting swept away by them. Now, for individuals with ADHD and autism, mindfulness can be especially beneficial. Why? Because these conditions often involve a lot of mental chatter, racing thoughts and difficulty focusing on the here and now. Mindfulness helps to quiet that noise, to bring a sense of calm and clarity. Think of your mind like a busy highway with cars zooming by in every direction. Mindfulness is like pulling over to the side of the road, taking a deep breath and simply observing the traffic without getting caught up in it. It's about noticing your thoughts and feelings without judging them as good or bad, right or wrong. And the great thing about mindfulness is that it doesn't require any special equipment or training. You can practice it anytime, anywhere. Just take a few minutes to focus on your breath, your body or your senses. Pay attention to the sights, sounds, smells and sensations around you. It's about being fully present in this moment, right here, right now. Look, you're busy. You've got ADHD, you've got autism, you've got life coming at you like a runaway train. It's easy to get lost in the shuffle, to forget things, to miss appointments. But that's where reminders come in, folks. This isn't about nagging yourself. It's about giving your brain a fighting chance. Think of it like this. You're not always firing on all cylinders, and that's okay. Reminders are like the pit crew for your brain, ready to jump in and keep you on track. Whether it's a simple sticky note on the fridge or an alarm blaring on your phone, these little nudges can make all the difference. We're talking about taking your medication on time, remembering to pick up the dry cleaning or even just calling your mum back. These might seem small but they add up. Each reminder is a win, a step towards feeling more in control of your life. And the best part is there are a million ways to do it. Phone apps, whiteboards, even tying a string around your finger, whatever my, my, um, whatever works for you. The key is to find a system that fits your life and stick with it. Remember, consistency is key. Let's talk about fidget tools. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't that just a distraction? And yes, in the wrong hands they can be. But for folks with ADHD and autism, these little gadgets can be a game changer. You see, when your brain's wired a little differently, sometimes it needs a little extra something to help it focus. That's where fidget tools come in. They provide an outlet for that restless energy that need to move, that can otherwise make it hard to concentrate. Think of it like this. You're trying to listen in a meeting, but your legs bouncing a mile a minute. Having a fidget toy in your hand can help ground you, channel that energy, and actually allow you to be more present. And the beauty of it is, there's a fidget tool out there for everyone. Squeeze balls, spinners, textured rings, you name it. It's about finding what works for you what helps you feel centered and focused. It's not a magic cure, but it's a tool, and sometimes that's all you need. Now let's talk organization. I know for some of you, that word alone sends shivers down your spine. But hear me out, because this is about making your life easier, not harder. And one surprisingly effective tool is color coding. See, our brains are wired to respond to visual cues. Colours jump out at us, they grab our attention. And when you're dealing with ADHD or autism, that can be a powerful thing. By assigning colours to different tasks, appointments or even objects, you're creating a visual system that your brain can latch onto. Imagine this, your calendar's a mess 
appointments jumbled together, deadlines looming. But what if each category had its own colour? Work meetings in blue, doctor's appointments in red, social events in green. Suddenly it's not just a wall of words, it's a map you can actually navigate. And it's not just calendars, folders, keys, even your clothes. Colour coding can bring order to the chaos. It's about creating a system that works for you, that makes your life a little bit easier to manage. And who wouldn't want that? We live in a world that's constantly on. The news cycle is 24-7, social media's buzzing, everybody wants a piece of you. It's enough to make anybody's head spin, especially if you're dealing with ADHD or autism. That's why carving out quiet time isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. Finding a place where you can escape the chaos is crucial. Maybe it's a quiet corner in your house, a park bench under your favourite tree, or even just locking yourself in the bathroom for five minutes. Whatever works. The point is to disconnect from the outside world and reconnect with yourself. This isn't about checking out completely. It's about checking in. Use this time to breathe deeply, meditate, or just let your thoughts wander. You'll be amazed at what comes up when you quiet the noise around you. Trust me, taking even a few minutes a day to just be can make a world of difference in how you manage your day. Let's be real, it's easy to get caught up in the negative. We focus on what's going wrong, what we haven't accomplished, and all the things we wish were different. But you know what that gets you? Stuck. That's why practicing gratitude is so important. Now, I'm not talking about putting on rose-coloured glasses and pretending everything's perfect. Life's tough, we all know that. But even in the midst of challenges, there are always things to be grateful for. It could be something as simple as a sunny day, a good cup of coffee, or the fact that you woke up breathing. Start a gratitude journal and write down a few things you're thankful for every day. You'll be surprised how this simple act can shift your perspective. When you start focusing on the good, you open yourself up to more positive experiences. You start to see the possibilities instead of the problems. We all know the saying, it's better to give than to receive. And you know what? It's true. When you're struggling with ADHD or autism, it's easy to get caught up in your own world. But focusing on others can be incredibly therapeutic. Kindness doesn't have to be complicated. Hold the door for someone. Offer a genuine compliment or just lend an ear to a friend in need. Small gestures can have a big impact. And the best part, kindness is contagious. When you put good energy out, put it out into the world, it comes back to you. You start to feel more connected to others and that can make a world of difference when you're feeling overwhelmed or isolated. Plus, helping others takes the focus off your own problems and allows you to see the bigger picture. Remember, we're all in this together. Look, life can be tough and dealing with ADHD or autism can add a whole other layer of complexity. You might be feeling overwhelmed, discouraged or just plain stuck. That's why it's crucial to find things that lift you up, things that inspire you to keep going. Reading inspirational material can be like a shot of espresso for your soul. We're talking about books, articles, videos even those quotes you see on social media. Anything that resonates with you and gives you that much needed boost. You see, these words, they can plant seeds of hope and remind you that you're not alone in this journey. 
when you read about others who have overcome challenges, who have defied the odds, it can ignite a fire within you. It's like having a conversation with someone who understands what you're going through, someone who's been there and come out stronger on the other side. So make time for inspiration, whether it's five minutes in the morning or a chapter before bed. Let those positive words seep into your mind and fuel your spirit. Remember, you've got this. Now, let's talk about setting personal goals. This isn't about comparing yourself to others. This is about you and what you want to achieve. It's about taking control of your life, ADHD, autism, all of it, and steering it in the direction you want to go. Start by thinking about what truly matters to you. What are your passions? What makes you feel alive? Maybe you want to learn a new skill, improve your relationships, or simply feel more confident in your own skin. Whatever it is, write it down. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day and your goals don't have to be massive, life-altering things. Start small, break down bigger goals into smaller, more manageable steps. This makes the journey less daunting and allows you to celebrate those small victories along the way. Setting goals gives you a sense of purpose, a reason to get out of bed each morning. It provides structure and helps you stay motivated, even when things get tough. So, take charge, set those goals, and start building the life you deserve. In the hustle and bustle of daily life, it's easy to just go through the motions without really taking the time to process our experiences. But for folks with ADHD or autism, reflection is crucial. It's about hitting the pause button, taking a step back and looking at your day with a critical yet compassionate eye. Think about what went well. What are you grateful for? Did you accomplish something you're proud of? Dwelling on the positive, celebrating your wins, no matter how small, can be incredibly empowering. It reinforces those positive neural pathways and helps build self-esteem. Now, it's equally important to acknowledge the challenges. What didn't go as planned? What triggered you? This isn't about dwelling on the negative. It's about identifying patterns, understanding your triggers, and learning from your experiences. Remember, every day is a learning opportunity. By taking the time to reflect, you gain valuable insights into yourself, your strengths, your challenges, and your triggers. This self-awareness is essential for growth and for navigating life with ADHD or autism. You know, we weren't meant to be cooped up inside all day, every day. Getting out into nature, even if it's just for a few minutes, can do wonders for your mental and physical well-being. It's like hitting the reset button on your system. Think about it. The fresh air, the sunlight on your skin, the sounds of the birds. It's a sensory experience that can calm your mind and rejuvenate your spirit. Whether you're strolling through a park, sitting by a lake, or hiking in the woods, connecting with nature allows you to disconnect from the daily grind and reconnect with yourself. And let's not forget the physical benefits. Getting outdoors encourages you to move your body, whether it's a leisurely walk or a more strenuous hike. And that movement, combined with the fresh air and sunshine, can boost your mood, reduce stress, and improve your sleep. So, make time for nature. Your mind and body will thank you. Look, we all make mistakes. We all have setbacks. It's part of life. But how you treat yourself when things go wrong, that's what matters. Beating yourself up, dwelling on your failures, that's a recipe for misery. 
It's like constantly poking at a wound, preventing it from healing. Instead, try practicing self-compassion. Talk to yourself the way you would talk to a friend who's going through a tough time. Offer yourself kindness, understanding and support. Remember that you're human and humans aren't perfect. We're all works in progress. Self-compassion isn't about letting yourself off the hook or ignoring your shortcomings. It's about acknowledging your struggles with kindness and understanding, without judgment. It's about recognising that you're doing the best you can with the tools you have. And sometimes the most courageous act is to be kind to yourself, especially when you feel like you least deserve it. Now I know what you're thinking. Meditation. That's for hippies and gurus. But let me tell you, meditation is for everyone. It's not about emptying your mind or chanting mantras. It's simply about taking a few minutes each day to sit quietly, focus on your breath, and observe your thoughts without judgment. Think of it like this. Your mind is like a busy city street, with thoughts and worries constantly racing by. Meditation is like stepping onto the sidewalk and simply observing the traffic without getting caught up in it. It's about finding a sense of stillness and peace amidst the chaos. And the benefits? They're undeniable. Regular meditation can reduce stress and anxiety, improve focus and concentration, and promote emotional well-being. It can help you become more aware of your thoughts and feelings and learn to respond to challenges with greater calm and clarity. So, find a quiet spot, close your eyes, and give it a try. You might be surprised at the difference it makes. You know, life can feel like a real rodeo sometimes, especially when you're dealing with ADHD or high-functioning autism. You might feel like you're on a bucking bronco, trying to hold on for dear life. It's easy to feel alone, like you're the only one struggling to wrangle these challenges. That's, that's where support groups come in. Think of it like this. You wouldn't try to train a wild stallion on your own, would you? You'd find yourself a seasoned rancher, someone who's been there, done that and knows how to handle those reins. A support group is like your group of ranchers, folks who understand what you're going through because they've been there themselves. These groups provide a safe and understanding space to share your experiences, your frustrations, your victories, the whole nine yards. You can talk about the things that make you feel different, the things that make you feel misunderstood without judgment. Remember, you don't have to go it alone. Reach out, find a support group and saddle up with others who get it. It's about finding your tribe, your posse, your people. Because at the end of the day, we all need a little help taming those wild horses. Now let's talk about the power of the mind. You know that old saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Well, it's true, folks. Our thoughts have a powerful impact on our reality. Visualization is a powerful tool that can help you take control of those thoughts and use them to your advantage. It's about creating a clear mental picture of what you want to achieve. Whether it's acing a presentation at work, navigating a social situation with confidence, or simply getting through the day without feeling overwhelmed. When you visualize, you're essentially giving your brain a sneak peek of success. You're mentally rehearsing for those challenging situations, which can help reduce anxiety and boost your confidence when you're actually in the moment. So how do you do it? Find a quiet spot, close your eyes, and imagine yourself successfully navigating those tricky situations. See yourself calm, collected, and in control. The more you practice, the more natural it will become. Remember, your mind is a powerful tool. Use it to visualize your success and watch as your reality starts to reflect those positive images.
Well, folks, we've covered a lot of ground in this series. We've explored 42 practical ways to manage ADHD and high-functioning autism holistically, covering aspects of body, mind, nutrition and spirit. We've talked about everything from getting enough sleep and exercise to practicing mindfulness and connecting with nature. Each of these steps, though small, can make a significant impact on your daily life. It's about taking radical responsibility and making positive changes that support overall well-being. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. Millions of people are facing similar challenges and there are resources available to help you every step of the way. Your journey toward better health and happiness starts now. Embrace these steps, make them a part of your daily routine and watch as your world transforms. You have the power to take control and thrive. And remember, if you're struggling, don't hesitate to reach out for professional help. A therapist can provide you with personalised guidance and support as you navigate these challenges. Subscribe to our channel for more guidance and support. Share this video with friends and family who could benefit from these tips. Let's build a community of understanding and empowerment